I want to preface this. I think I misunderstood the assignments. But I hope. Hello, you may know me as Nikia Louie, playwright in the Lorraine Torres Strait Islander Woman Bagel Boiler. Now, in the future, I'm known as Nikita Louita Louie, internet super slut. <laughs> By now, you may have heard of some of my seminal works, Jackie Jackie Brown, the traditional owner of Death, Why Do My Milkshakes Bring All the Boys to the Yard, <laughs> and my theatre adaptation told in trilogy of the classic Australian, Australian film starring Dennis Hopper, Mad Dog Morgan, adapted, directed, produced, and starring me, and coincidentally, playing at the Opera House. <laughs> I've travelled from my beach house on Saturn that I share with Devon Sawyer. I know you might be surprised that as an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, I've lived this long to the future to come back and talk to you today. Mainly because I only should have lived until I was about 50, and I know you were all counting down the 24 years you had left of listening to me. Well, <laughs> hard to you. <laughs> Turns out Death Becomes Her wasn't a film, and was actually a documentary, and I drank the potion that Meryl Streep and Gordy Horn took to keep young. If you don't get that reference, or how do I say it, you suck. <laughs> Now, the future is a tough, a tough place. Space travel is dangerous and inf inflation is high. So listen up and listen good. The majority of fitter subscribers are under the age of 35. Huh, no, it isn't because we kill anyone over the age of 40, like you may think or recommend. It's because theatre is exciting and new and fast and doesn't have a rating. Let me reiterate, theatre does not have a rating, like, you know, like MMA and that stuff. After the internet was censored and we stopped being able to see people's private privates on our laptops in the privacy of cafes, the reiteration of the, of the fact that it didn't have a, um, a, a rating was stronger. Um, theatre may maintain discrimination to some extent, but it gives oppressed people a voice. A voice that isn't necessarily heard as vividly, as easily, as organically in any other artistic medium. One of theatre's jobs for some of us is to explore the relationships that exist and how people are complicit in oppressing people, from the very personal to the whole. This is called drama. We stopped calling anything that, that, that was said we stopped calling anything that said anything mildly interesting political and started becoming critical. We didn't constantly try to find solutions, but we're all brave enough to turn the criticism on ourselves and onto the world around us. We tried to get to a place of equity through doing. Eventually, racism, classism, sexism, avatarism, and any isn't really diminished in theatre for what I practiced, and it really helped that we did this naked. <laughs> There was a setback though when James Cameron tried to repackage theatre, tried to repackage theatre as interactive movies, when people would sit in a room and act out Avatar. This was stopped after the James Cameron Avatar incident, which we may never speak of, and theatre went back to being theatre. The theatre adaptation of Avatar told in blue face has already been cooperated by me, new pack of leeches, except for programming at, Gr at Griffin in 2099. I don't know what year I'm telling this from. <laughs> I didn't mention how I was once known as an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander playwright. This is no longer in the future. Playwrights are just known as playwrights or broke. <laughs> what we realised after the James Cameron Avatar incident, which we may never speak of, is that the very act of naming is essentializing. Okay, so this is the best segue, but I can't go into the details of the James Cameron Avatar incident, which we may, which we may never speak of. So you'll just have to take me at face value. And I think I've used that joke out of already. <laughs> We realise that the rhetoric behind culturalism and racism is based on the same constructed framework and it's the same thing coming from different extremes. So we burnt the framework. We literally burnt the framework. We had a bonfire and danced to the dubstep remix of Here Comes the Sun. This is called generational understanding. We took the focus of trying to erase one line and draw another and focused on practice, on meaningful collaboration, a term called by David Murray at hashtag Australia Theatre Forum 2013. He now rules the planet Jupiter, if anyone wants to know. <laughs> what we realised, it was already difficult for an artist to be at the centre of their practice process and work within the structure of theatre, creating further frameworks and limited artistic practice. We realised that Indigenous practitioners, we had the space where we could change the audience who sees art and that we could stop the commodification of our stories and work and challenge an audience and bring in a new audience who wants to be challenged. Therefore, creating space for other artistic practitioners from the diaspora of the other. What I want to leave you with is the importance of valuing the artist. 
After I dated every guy on OkCupid, Blender, Plenty of Fish, RCP, and Hey You, Let's Bone, and before I met Devin Sawyer, I was out of work and had a lot of time to reflect on my career path as a playwright and internet super slut. I realised I was very lucky to be surrounded by people through my career from emerging writer to crowning playwright to established playwright to when the F will you shut up playwright. I was surrounded by people who valued me as an artist for my voice and had a genuine interest in the development of my practice and process. I love all of these people and they now work for me on my beach house in Staten with Devon Sawyer. Um, and I'd like to leave you with this because I thought it was really cool. If it plays. Ha, ha, ha.